Hello everyone, Alex here from warnoffkeys.com and in this video I'm going to show you how you can add different cooldowns to your existing commands. This video does assume that you are going to be using my command based system here. A link to the GitHub repository where you can go ahead and clone this can be found in the video description and in the video description you will also find a link to the video where I actually wrote this command base so you can have a better understanding of what's inside. Now we're going to be adding on top of the functionality and we're going to allow us to simply pass in a different argument here. Here we can see we are importing a lot of the different properties. And another example of this is within our add command, we have some different options right here. We're gonna actually pass in a cooldown that will make it so the users can only run a command once every certain amount of time. This could be five seconds, 10 seconds, whatever it might be. Real quick, I wanna mention that if you need any help with any of the code found in this video, you can leave a comment down below or if you want a faster response, you can join the Warn Off Keys Discord. We have a bunch of people constantly joining in here. A lot of people are talking within the channels and getting help with their code. And I'm frequently posting polls and trying to get more feedback from you guys. So if you need help with anything, go ahead and tag me within the JavaScript channel. And I'll try and get to you as soon as I can. So with all that said, let's go ahead and actually start writing some code. So I'm going to use this add command here. And if I run my bot with node index.js, I could then go into my tutorial channel and I can run add five and 10. Now, of course, this just simply adds it up and tells us the actual sum, but I can run that again and I can run that again, add five and five. So I can just run this as frequently as I want. So let's say hypothetically we wanted an actual cooldown within this command so I can only run it once every 10 seconds. So I'm gonna go into my code here and I'm going to add another property. This will be called cooldown and I'm gonna say 10. This is going to assume that the value is always in seconds. And so if you wanted minutes, for example, one thing you could do is you could say 60 times five, and now you only have to worry about changing this five. If you wanna change that to 10, you just simply change the five to 10. And you don't actually have to worry about how many seconds are within five or 10 minutes. You would just have the calculation do that work for you. So for now, I'm just gonna simply save this as 10. We can then save and close this file. We won't need it anymore. And all of our code is gonna be inside of our command based file right here. So inside when we're destructuring all these properties from our command options object, we want to actually gain access to our cooldown. And this will be a set equal to negative one. A negative cooldown will essentially be ignored. So negative one essentially means there won't be any cooldown. So here I can create an array. I can say constant recently ran. It's going to be an empty array. And we're going to store a string in here. The string is going to be a combination of three different items. So we want to make sure that the user can run our add command in one server and have that, let's say, a cooldown of 10 minutes, we don't want the user to be prevented from running the add command in a different server using the same bot. So we have to specify the guild ID. Now, what other pieces of information do we actually have to have? Of course, we need the actual user ID so we know which user to prevent from running the command too quickly. So we're going to have our user ID. And then finally, we're going to have what command they actually ran. So if they run the add command, we don't want to prevent them from running a help command or a ticket command just because you ran add within the last 10 seconds. So we're gonna have the actual command. Now, of course, these are just the names of the actual variables we're going to use, but we're going to want to get these three pieces of information with actual values and put them together as one string. Then from there, we're going to essentially say that whenever a command is ran, we're going to say if cooldown is a positive number, which means that us as programmers specify that this command should have a valid cooldown, then we want to see if whatever string we came up with is inside of this array. If it is, we're going to tell the user who ran the command to slow down, you can't use that again. But if they're not inside of the array, we are then going to take the string that we concatenated together and put that inside of the array. And then we're going to say, okay, after 10 seconds, after five seconds, however long it is, we are then going to remove that person from the array. So hopefully that makes sense. If you're confused at all, then just follow along and you'll see the exact concept once I continue to actually use this array here. So scrolling down, we see that inside of this if statement, a command has been ran. Now here we're going to ensure that the user has the necessary permissions. And here we're going to see if the user has the necessary roles. So after this, I'm going to add another comment. We're going to say, ensure the user has not ran this command too frequently. So we can say if cooldown is greater than zero, and then we could say, and recently ran dot includes, we're gonna pass in cooldown string, which we have not created yet. 
But for now, for simplicity, I'm just going to say let cooldown string equals an empty string. Now I can say message.reply. I'm going to say you cannot use that command so soon. Please wait. And then we can return. Now, after this if statement, we know that everything's going to be correct. Actually, we have some more checks down here, so let's scroll down a little bit further. Here we're seeing if the amount of argument is correct, but then after that, we're going to actually run our command. Now, at this point is where we can actually add our cooldown string, which again is just an empty string. We're going to be filling that with real information soon. We're going to add the string into our recently ran array. So down here, I can say, recently ran dot push, which is how you're going to actually add something to an array, we can pass in our cooldown string. And then we want to make sure that we're actually waiting a certain amount of time, and then removing that item from the array. So I could say set timeout. This is going to give us a callback function as the first argument, and the second argument will be how long to wait. This is going to be in milliseconds. And so there's 1000 milliseconds in one second. So we can say 1000 times cooldown. Now, cool down is going to be the actual number of seconds that we have in our properties right here. And so scrolling down here, one thing we want to also check is that we want to make sure that a cooldown is actually there. So we can say if cooldown is greater than zero, whoops, cooldown is greater than zero, then we want to actually add this to the array and do the actual functionality for the cooldown. If the cooldown is negative one, then we don't actually want to implement a cooldown. And so we're not going to go ahead and move forward with this code here. Now, inside of our set timeout, we actually want to remove this. So I'm going to do this through a filter system. And so with that said, we actually have to scroll back up and we have to change this from a const to a let. Then going back down. Inside, I can say recently ran equals recently ran dot filter. Now, if you, for those who don't know, this is going to essentially loop through every single element within this array. And then it's going to run this callback function for every single element as it loops through. So the first argument within this callback function is going to be our current string. So I'm just going to call this string. And then now we get to return true or false. If it's true, then that means that we should keep this within the array. If it's false, that means that we should remove this from the array. So a simple way to do this is say string is not exactly equal to cooldown string. Now we have to actually return this. And to make sure that this is actually working, we can add a console log here. We can say before, which is going to be recently ran. And then I'm going to make another thing here that will say after, which will also be recently ran. Now, of course, this is the same variable, but we're assigning it a new value right here. Now, with that said, we can go ahead and save our file and we can restart our bot. Going back into Discord, if I run add five and five, that works as expected. If I run add 10 and 10, it'll then say, you cannot use that command so soon, please wait. Now, after waiting a few seconds, we see before is an array with an empty string in it, and then after is an array with nothing inside of it. So we see that empty string, because if we scroll up, we see our cooldown string is actually empty right here. So if we scroll all the way up here, we can actually get the syntax we want. I'm going to copy this comment here, and scrolling back down, I'm going to paste it right here. So we have access to our guild. If we scroll up, we see that right here on line 88. We also have access to our member so we can get the ID. And then we also have access to the actual cooldown value. So we have access to the three things we need. So the cooldown string, I'm going to use template literals to make this easier. We are going to say guild.id with a dash outside of the braces, and then another variable inserted as member.id, another dash, and then the actual command. So scrolling up, we see a list of commands here. Now these commands can be just one single string or they can be arrays. And so we want to make sure that we are checking for every single use case. If you have add and addition, we want to make sure that you can run the add command and there's gonna be a cooldown for both add and the addition command. So that way a user can't run the add command and then bypass the cooldown by running one of the aliases such as addition. But with that said, at this stage, our commands array is always going to have a first index because we are actually converting any type of string into an array right here. And if you watch the video on how we created this command handler, you understand this. Instead of storing whatever alias they're running on, such as addition, we're going to store the actual zeroth index right here. So scrolling down under our braces right here, we can say commands index zero. So now to make sure we understand what's going on, I'm going to console log this. So cool down string 
And then I'm going to save this, and if we restart the bot, I can then go back into Discord, and I can try adding 10 and 10. Now we see our cooldown string is the guild ID, we see the user ID, and then we see the actual function, which is add. If I try running this again, it says you cannot use the command soon, please wait. And then almost shortly after that, so this was just a coincidence, it happened to go past 10 seconds. And so before, we see this actual string here, but then after, it is no longer there. So now I can run this command again, add 5 and 5. And there we go, and that works again. But just for demonstration purposes, if I were to add 20 and 20, because it has not been 10 seconds, it says you cannot use that command so soon, please wait. And so this is how you're going to add a cooldown system within the existing command base that we've covered within this series. Thanks for watching this Discord JS tutorial. If you want to learn more about Discord JS, consider clicking on the playlist you see on your screen now. If you need help, feel free to leave a comment or ask in the Warnoff Keys Discord, which can be found in the video description.